The highlight of Somerville arrives just a few minutes in. An explosion shakes your house and suddenly you're in the midst of an alien invasion. And faced with the obvious option of hiding in the basement, you and your group decide to… get in their car? This isn't the only time in Somerville that you're faced with logic that isn't very logical. Since this is a puzzle-based adventure, progress is always based on discovering a specific solution. But those tend to be fussy or unintuitive, and occasionally broken, which makes surviving this apocalypse a real bore. Shortly into the game, you get a hold of the game's one interesting mechanic. A puzzle MacGuffin on your arm that lets you turn the hard red shards into a blue liquid when you channel its energy through a light source. Later, you'll receive another arm power that has the opposite effect. And together, these yin-yang processes add up to a flexible concept. Not to mention a reasonably impressive use of physics as the substances dissolve and solidify around features in the landscape. But as you and your canine companion traverse a devastated and deserted world, it's hard not to feel that Somerville could do with a few more ideas like this, even in its four to five hour runtime. As there's not a great deal else here besides pulling a few levers, handles, and switches, and running away from some alien hunters. Of course, plenty of narrative-led games make do just fine with pared back mechanics, but Somerville creates an uphill struggle for itself from the off by trying to build its scenario without the use of spoken or written words. What worked to evoke an eerie otherworldliness viewed through the eyes of a lone child in Play Dead's games makes far less sense when dealing with a family and a recognizable reality. There's little indication throughout Somerville that it actually wants you to care about the man and his family. On occasions when he's separated from and reunited with his dog, he scarcely acknowledges the poor creature's return. Or when you finally manage to deactivate one of the robot alien things that chases you, there's no buildup of tension and no space provided to explore the man's relief or celebrate his victory before the next scene. Even one of the game's stronger features, its visual style ultimately lacks any real dynamism. The game's eye for artistic composition is at its best in the first act, among the depictions of silent rolling hills and fields, but the framing of an urban street and buildings later on is sometimes almost as striking. Even then though, locations feel like flat stock images that could be from any apocalypse media. The longest single sequence in the game takes place in a grey mine, where at best you might spot an interesting rock formation. Somerville is packed with inconsistencies, such as a scene with a pool of water where you're arbitrarily limited to moving in a straight line, along with a deficit of clear visual communication that leads to tiresome trial and error, especially in do or die chase sequences. Various glitches also undermine your trust in its systems. If you're stumped somewhere, it may be because something's gone wrong and you need to reload the section, or in one case, reinstall the entire game. Items don't act the way they're supposed to, for example, or you can get stuck in the floor. The final act of Somerville does at least take some mildly intriguing surreal turns, playing on the psychology of the main character to have you questioning what's real and what isn't. But on the back of such an arduous journey, it's too little, too late. And that opening boom remains a promise that was never fulfilled. The only thing worth complimenting in the end is whether Somerville is an overambitious project that couldn't make good on its grand vision, or if it simply wasn't a very inspired idea in the first place.